Thank you. So I'm going to be giving the presentation today on behalf of my supervisor, Dr. Mark Chignall. Unfortunately, he's at the HFES con uh, conference in San Diego. So I'm going to do my best. Okay. So the presentation today is going to focus on designing games specifically for adults that look at their cognitive properties and how to assess them and how to interpret these results. So to give you a bit of background information and motivation for this research, I'm going to start off with a bit of statistics. In Canada right now, we're facing the silver tsunami of baby boomers. So our aging population is rapidly growing and it's kind of, it's, it's overshadowing a lot of our younger populations at this point. So for a healthcare system to adapt to this, we have to be able to look at age-related conditions. And typically in medicine, cognitive assessments are what they use to diagnose cognitive status. This is often used as an indicator for mortality upon hospital admission. So focusing on a patient's cognitive status, their mental abilities, is a good way to assess how they're doing and how this will translate to their physical and functional abilities. One way we've decided to look at this is through looking at the central executive functions. And essentially these control your body processes, your thoughts, and your behaviors. So examples of executive functions include things like your inhibition, shifting, and updating abilities. So if you think of executive functions similar to your brain being an orchestra conductor and your body being the orchestra, these executive functions help keep things running. So things like inhibition is your ability to suppress an action or a thought. So if you're touching a hot stove, your inhibition ability will tell you, stop, don't do that, it hurts. Shifting ability is the ability to switch between different tasks, which is important between driving. So changing lanes and moving forward, checking your blind spots. Updating ability looks at your ability to add and remove things to your working memory. So remembering a phone number at the beginning of lecture and being able to recall that later. So these are the type of cognitive functions we want to be able to assess through games. So to first design our game, we have to consult with our medical experts to figure out what exactly are we measuring and how do we do so. So we conducted a series of focus groups at Sunnybrook and Bridgepoint Hospital in Toronto to assess what type of abilities do elderly patients have as well as uh, what are their perceptual motor abilities. So if we gave them a tablet, would they be able to interface with the tablet or would this reflect in their ability to actually play a game? So from this, we came up with an idea of, we're going to develop a nice and simple game. We're going to go off something called whack-a-mole, so based off the classic carnival game. So we chose this task because it looks at a discrimination task. Users have to hit a mole, and they have to avoid hitting a secondary character. So this impinges upon their inhibition ability that they would need to do this task. We also select this task because it can be easily adaptable. So if we wanted it to adapt abilities such as shifting or updating, we'd be we would be able to modify this game in such a way that we can incorporate these ideas. So once we developed this game, we conducted a three-part usability study at the University of Toronto. And we gathered three types of data. We want to look at the demographics of our users and what their technology experience and usability <coughs> abilities are. Then we conducted a test on the computer looking at their different cognitive abilities. So these were tests that looked specifically at three of the executive functions, so looking at the Stroop task, Wisconsin card sorting task and a color monitoring task. And next, we actually had our participants play the whack-a-mole game, which we were able to modify in terms of changing things like target sizes, uh, colors, as well as how many characters they would see at once. So from this, we gathered 24 participants, seven males and 17 males. And because we pulled from a university population, we have the university effect where we're going to get participants that are going to fall within this age range of around 21 to 55 years. So when looking at our computer-based test, we found that our, the scores from their inhibition tests were strongly correlated with their shifting and updating abilities. And this has been shown in literature as things like inhibition could be overlapping into other types of cognitive abilities, so it might not exactly be completely isolated. <coughs> Next, what we wanted to do from our whack-a-mole game, we looked at uh, their reaction time and their accuracy of hitting these moles. So looking at how far their hit was from the actual target center and using classic HCI components such as Fitz Law, we tried to model if we can actually see Fitz Law on a tablet. This was actually very difficult to model because Fitz Law on a computer doesn't exactly map to touch face devices as a user constantly changes their finger position. So we can't exactly use Fitz Law to help calibrate our game. So next we want to look at things like a speed accuracy trade-off which we actually found was significant, which is fantastic. So as users are taking more time to respond, they're more accurate versus those that are quickly seeing a target, hitting it, much less accurate. So from here, we wanted to use this metric 
to create something a bit more standard. So we took the z-scores and standardized all their uh, speed accuracy trade-offs to come up with this overall performance metric. So essentially, if somebody's taking more time to respond, they should be more accurate. So you should see a trade-off. If you subtract the two, you should end up getting a difference of zero. So what we wanted to do is be able to calibrate this to each individual participant, especially for ad elderly adults. Some may be more physically able than others. So in order to provide a more uniform gaming experience, we want to be able to make a metric that reflects their abilities, and in turn, those were the scores that we interpreted from that. So from this, we were able to use our metric, our overall performance metric, and correlate these with their cognitive abilities. And we found that it was actually significantly correlated with their inhibition shifting and updating ability. So it's fantastic. We were able to show that our whack-a-mole game is able to predict these cognitive abilities. Therefore, if we put this game in front of patients, hopefully we can get a better picture of what's going on inside their central executives. So from this, we're now conducting clinical studies uh, on elderly patients, looking at them post-operative to see the effect of analgesics after an operation to see if that modifies any of their cognitive properties. Also looking at adults waiting in an emergency department and looking at patients that have just received neuro rehab to see how their cognitive status is changing before and after they receive rehab. And so the contributions from this work is we've designed a game-based type of cognitive assessment and we've shown that Fitz Law is very difficult to show on a tablet, but we will be looking into how we can adjust this. And we've also proposed a new uh, overall performance metric.